Welcome to the Ball Brad Show. It is Wednesday, March 27th, and Joe Biden. Good old Joey, the geriatric, the puppet, the guy that hits a golf ball backwards. Yes, we have video of it. Falls up a flight of stairs numerous times to the point where he's taking the short stairs to get in Air Force One. He fights with his teleprompter, and this statistic always gets me. His teleprompter is undefeated. He's never lost. Dukes it out with good old Joey each and every day and comes out victorious every single time. He looks for dead people in the crowd. Can't figure that one out. And also, this one really does get me. He is conversing with dead people in meetings, but it's not like he's just having a conversation like he's schizophrenic or something. He's actually seeing the dead person. And these people have been dead for three or four decades at a time. It's truly mind-blowing. This is the guy that Democrats wanted in office and want again in office. Uh, this guy is also driving our country into the ground on multiple fronts. Hell, folks, let's just say it. Right now, Joe Biden is still not even close. The worst president in American history. Go damn, Patriots. It's good to see you this fine Wednesday morning. And we're just going to kick it off here with the news regarding New York Council. City Council, to be specific, is asking New York's highest court to reverse a pair of rulings. We covered this in the past in a move that could ultimately allow non-citizens to vote in local elections. The Democrats will not stop. That is the end goal to have all these illegal aliens start off voting here in local elections, but the end goal is to have them vote in federal elections, folks, for the presidency. Mark my words, that is the goal. That is the whole objective here and has been the objective for multiple de uh, decades for these Democrats. The controversial law would allow 800,000 non-citizens with green cards to vote quote today's filing to appeal the second department's recent decision seeks a determination from the state's highest court that the law is consistent with the state constitution election law and the municipal home rule law empowering new yorkers to participate in our local democratic process can only strengthen new york city by increasing civic engagement oh my god if you're a republican get out if you're a republican run you know, we, we, we always say, like, our votes matter, right? Even though we're, we're an electoral college. Like, your vote does matter. Not anymore. Not with this. If you're a Republican, if you have an R next to your name or you're an independent, whatever, um, your vote, upwards of 800,000, doesn't matter anymore because now you have a non-citizen, illegal alien that's basically voting, vo voting, voiding, rather. They are voting, but they're vo voiding your vote uh, at the election, at, at the booth now for these municipalities. It's wild. It's so insane. So the election law has been winding its way through the court system. Again, we've been covering this since day one, since it was passed in the city council back in 2021. And then uh, people were saying on the Democrats side of the aisle, like, oh, that's not happening. We saw we saw a conversation between Jerry Nadler and Jim Jordan about this whole thing. And Jim Jordan had to sit there and twist Jerry Nadler's arm of getting it out of his mouth that illegal aliens can vote in municipal elections. Last month, the law was struck down, which again, we covered. Uh, it was deemed unconstitutional by an appeals court. The appeals court decision upheld the lower court's ruling in 2022. The, the, the courts can't get their head on straight, folks. Again, why? Because the Democrats want this. The Democrats want to sit there and they know that they're going to gain votes from these illegal aliens because the illegal aliens are going to feel like they owe something to the Democrat Party because Joe Biden and the Democrat Party just allowed the floodgates to open down there to the southern border. Well, speaking of other news about the legal immigration, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Massachusetts is burning $75 million a month on just shelters, may soon run out of cash. <laughs> I'm in migrant crisis. So I haven't read this. I just, I saw the headline. I was like, this is gonna be too good. We got to share this with the Patriots and experience it together. So Massachusetts is spending 75 freaking million dollars a month. Holy crap. On shelters and is reportedly on track to run out of cash next month. They, they wanted it. Whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We're just giving them what they wanted, okay? They wanted me to write the shelter, write the sanctuary city, all this stuff. They, they're getting what they wanted. Democrats can't run stuff, folks. That That is just what it comes down to. Look at every Democrat-ran area. It's a dumpster fire. Now you have this. They can't even budget appropriately. You give them what they wanted. They bragged about all these things for years, if not decades. So you finally give them on a silver platter, and they can't handle it. Or even a year, two years. So Democrat governor, 
their administration has not revealed exactly what the money is slated to run out or when rather but is expected to be sometime in early or mid-april quote we don't have any further updates at this time we are encouraged by the process the legislature has made and look forward to working with them to finalize the supplemental budget as soon as possible remember folks states and cities can't print money so they have to take it from where somewhere else and if you're like chicago or new york city where do you take that from education so your kids americans get screwed on behalf of somebody else and so <laughs> it's the crazy thing we can either laugh about it or we can be really pissed about it and since today i got a nice cup of coffee we're gonna laugh about it folks they're gonna take it from the education department do you notice it's always americans that are getting screwed at the end of the day and we just got done covering a whole fact that these democrats not only want to sit there and pay for these people's uh rent their clothing their bedding their lawyer fees their transportation their college education uh child care dental health uh they're paying for their trans surgeries in some states we're not making that up this is all legitimate they're getting three course meals laundry services bedding plasma tvs coffee tables cell phones uh services are all fully paid for not only that they're getting everything handed to them which is costing new money but now they also want those votes they want to sit there and give them the right to vote cities are going bankrupt no money and democrats still love it they want more of it they're freaking idiots i'm sorry you're an idiot massachusetts has seen an influx of thousands of migrants in recent months that has strained the state's shelter system as well as its finances no shit you didn't budget for it because you're like ah nobody's gonna call me on my bluff nobody's gonna actually bust a bunch of migrants here ah it's fake news not anymore about 7,500 families are currently living in emergency assistance shelters another 240 families are currently living at state overflow sites you know what also sucks by the way is yes these are for migrants but it also is for homeless it's for americans so who's getting the shaft again yes what is it what is it yes you heard folks it's for americans are being screwed at the end of the day americans are getting screwed our veterans don't have a place to sleep or a place to go to eat because these people are taking up the beds those numbers do not take into account the thousands of more single migrants and homeless americans housed in the shelters we've already seen americans getting booted out and getting replaced with what yes you heard it correctly you stated it previously illegal aliens the state legislature is currently negotiating a new spending plan with lawmakers working to add hundreds of millions of dollars to the state's budget to fund the government's response to the migrant crisis god how can you do that you can't print money so oh you got to move money that's right they're, they're going to screw over somebody else's stuff so they can give this money to illegal aliens quote i'm hopeful that we get into this discussion with our counterparts that will be able to produce something with time to spare in terms of any funding running out mm. just lovely just lovely look at uh, massachusetts will start requiring migrants at shelters to start showing that they are attempting to obtain work or housing well i hear uh, tyson's is uh, hiring so maybe go over to tyson because they're firing american workers and hiring migrants so there's that for you and allegedly this is uh americans number one issue voters say immigration is the top issue that's facing the country really i i really do mean this i don't see any democrats complaining about this i really do mean that i don't see any democrats i don't watch too many democrats but hell msnbc abc nbc cnn i don't see them ever complaining about the immigration issue do you guys let me know in the chat maybe i'm under a rock i'm willing to eat my words i don't see them talking about all the negatives of what's going on here at the southern border i hear them mentioning it oh there's massive migration oh look at the climate change that's happening people are fleeing from oppression they're asylum seekers they're dreamers i don't see them say this is their number one issue so it's a little loosey-goosey here Voters say that immigration is the single biggest issue facing the country, with President Joe Biden facing his lowest approval rating over his handling of immigration, a new poll has found. But they'll still vote for him. Like, it's not bad enough for Democrats, you guys. I'm always going to say this. Democrats are living in actual shit in San Francisco. I don't mean the cuss. Okay, poop. Human feces. They're living in their own waste. Drug addicts all over the streets. I'm not exaggerating. If you go down to some of these places that are Democrat-ran, it looks like an apocalypse. People will be pushing empty wheelchairs with like uh like garb on that you just got out of the hospital their hair is just all fried everywhere the smell is in it, it almost smells like you're in the middle east in some areas it just smells like human feces human waste you can't even describe it there's finkel matter on the ground you'll see drugs on the ground 
you'll see people laying on the ground in the most touristy of areas you will see this people haven't washed themselves or bathed they're masturbating right out there in the public in touristy areas they're dumping in the street in front of your children i am not making any of this up this is out there in the open this is real it's not bad enough for democrats yet democrats are having their kids watch all this stuff they say it's their number one issue but when it comes down to voting oh boy oh boy are they going to vote for joey in, in big waves folks don't say red wave don't say red wave because joe biden could very well beat trump yes i am dead serious and i do believe that joe biden can beat donald trump we need to get out and vote i don't give a damn what any republican or conservative says i'm going to shoot you straight here on the show if fox news says oh donald trump's up in the polls i don't care get out and vote regardless get out and vote if grandma can't get up help her get the neighbors get the other patriots from the neighborhood to pick her up and get her out there so that she could vote or get a mail-in ballot and get her to vote for hopefully trump if that's who she wants i don't i'm not saying cohorse her right horse just you know you gotta vote for mr 35 but anyways we did a deviation there the new harvard harris poll in conjunction with the center of american political studies found that the immigration is not only the top issue facing the country but that biden has the lowest approval rating on his handling of immigration compared to other issues Joe Biden sucks at everything. Like, what is he good at? Well, honestly, other than, you know, fumbling through his words and finding this teleprompter and talking to dead people. Other than that, he's not good at anything. When asked what the most important issue facing the country are, 36% of respondents said that immigration is the biggest issue, while 33% said inflation and price increases are the top issue facing the United States. Economy and jobs came in third with 23%, while crime and drugs was fourth place. Do you notice this is all Democrat caused right here? This is all Joe Biden. Do you guys understand that? Like, there's not one issue that's on this list that's in the top four for Americans that isn't Joe Biden do a disastrous job. Like, on every on every front here. It's wild. Just think about this, you guys. Immigration should not even be a talking point. Donald Trump had it figured out. Just build the wall, right? He, he had to remain in Mexico policy. Seek asylum in your own country. It was, it was figured. And the dude comes in day one and, and Fs it up. Let's go to the next one. Inflation and price increases. You just had to open up the economy, you idiot. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to do, you didn't have to touch immigration. You were fine. You didn't have to touch the economy. Other say, hey, go back to work. That was it. You just had to ride on Trump's coattails and you effed it up. That's how bad Democrats are. They're given something great and they have to F it up. Economy and jobs came in third. Open up the, you didn't have to do anything. Go back to work and Joe, go go nap. Stay in your basement and go, you don't have to do a damn thing. He Fs it up. Crime and drugs was in fourth place. It's exacerbated to the point, not only, not only do we have massive fentanyl killing like 100,000 Americans a year coming through our southern border. Folks, the Democrats are giving Americans and also illegals syringes and drugs in certain areas and cities to do it out in broad daylight. They're at the point where they don't even want to arrest, arrest people for doing drugs in broad daylight or committing crimes. No wonder crime is through the roof. So again, all this is Democrat caused. This is not conservative values. It's not Republican values. I'm not saying Republicans don't you know, cause some of these problems or have caused these problems in the past. But predominantly, the ideology is this is full Democrat right here. Democrats want open borders. Democrats don't know how to handle the economy. They want price increases, right? Because price increases cause an inflated economy because they want more wages for an employer or rather employee. They want to sit there and have the government outpace the private sector, which we saw during COVID when Joe Biden handed out trillions of dollars worth of money that was completely corrupt, by the way. With their, their whole handling of that, there's a ton of people that didn't need COVID relief, but they still sent it out to everybody. The massive corruption there on that front, typical. Well, immigration and inflation switched spots with respondents were asked which issues affected the most on a personal level. A full 38% of respondents said inflation is the most important issue uh, to them on a personal level, and immigration came second. Not bad enough. It's not bad. Immigration hasn't impacted the American people. They don't. They don't feel it in their wallets yet. A lot of the stuff, you guys, that we're seeing as an American people, they nobody's felt really the effects of what's going on other than inflation, because inflation actually takes a hit pretty quickly. Whereas the debt, nobody's really faced that yet. The fact that you're not going to get your social security, well, that's not going to hit you until you're freaking slapped right upside your head when you're trying to retire. Uh, illegal immigrants, well, it doesn't happen until maybe one of them takes your job or kills a family member or tries to kill you or commits some sort of heinous crime or just outcompete you in some way, shape, or form. See, it doesn't affect Americans yet, and so that's why they're not moving with their vote. They're not really affected by it. You guys, you have to understand how much it actually takes a Democrat to move. They'll go far left, 
but I mean in terms of moving with their feet and with the pen on the voting, look at California, look at Portland, Oregon, look at Seattle, Washington, look at Chicago, look at New York, look at Washington, look at Washington, D.C., look at all these Democrat-ran areas and how much a dumpster it is, and they still vote Democrat. You want to know how hard it is to get a Democrat not to vote Democrat, even though they're living in Swallow? Swallow is a swallower or swallow? You guys let me know in the comment section. Look, I'm an average guy. I'm not better than any of you guys. I'm not saying I am. You know how bad it is? There's Democrat ran like, like cities and localities that have never been run by a Republican ever since its inception. The place is a dumpster. Just crime ridden everywhere, homeless, immigration, just, just dumpster. Not a Republican in sight. They won't vote Republican. They're going to ruin our city. It's already ruined, you idiot. You literally stepped in human shit just now as you're saying it. What are you talking about? I don't mean to cuss, but it, this is not working. And it's astonishing how those that this isn't working vote for a guy where this isn't working. There's like a common theme, you know what I mean? Like Jerry Nadler just almost passed out the other day. It's so common. If, if you look at the Democrat side of the aisle, especially during the State of the Union, like what the hell? You just look at them. It looks like they're falling apart. You like blow on them. They're going to disappear because they're all dust. So that's what's going on. Supposedly, it's America's number one issue. I find that hard to believe because uh, nothing's being done. Look at this picture right here. Nothing's being done, folks. But they'll still vote for the guy. They'll, they'll still, they're going to show up in millions. He could get another 80 million. I mean, I still don't believe that. I still can't wrap my head around that. I mean, does any, do you guys on, hey, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section. I think it's safe to say it now on YouTube and kind of screw them anyways. They're effing with our channel. Might as well say what we want. Yeah, did they steal the election? Let me know in the comment section. Because I don't think there was enough votes to steal the election, like fraudulent votes. But I definitely think there was fraud. Oh, boy, was there fraud. Well, you don't have any proof of that. Really? Not only did we run the survey and saw that 21% did some foosery and 21% on multiple levels, depending on what you're looking at. But there's also a ton of people that we looked at the voter rolls and we saw the locations that nobody lives there. Like, there's a ton of voter fraud. There's more people voting in states that don't even exist. I mean, that's why the GOP is suing like Michigan and other states because they're not really they're not willing to update their voter rolls. And why would they? They have an election coming up. Why? Why they need those dead people for Joey to win? The dead vote for the dead. Joey's dead. Dead people are going to vote for the guy that's dead. Joe looks dead. So wild stuff here. Wild stuff, folks. Let me know what you think about that last election. Look, they're going to try to do it again. Mail it. The universal mail-in balloting is happening again. You guys don't think that's going away. You, all the foosery that happened, it's going to happen again. I just want to prepare you for that. I don't want you to be blindsided and be like, holy shnikes, that happened? Yes, it's going to happen. They're going to try and swindle election again. Nobody likes Joe. Nobody. We need Trump in office, you guys. We need Trump in office. Well, let's get into some really interesting news here with Sean Diddy. P. Diddy. Uh, you know, I guess there's a, a raid that happened in his house the other day and I was watching some footage of it. It looked pretty crazy. I'm not big into celebrities, guys. I'm not big into that whole culture of Hollywood and, you know, oh, look at this person. Oh my God, it's, it's Britney Spears or it's Keith Swift. I, look, I, I'm an average Joe. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't look at this whole Hollywood scene and follow celebrities and into the drama of all this stuff. There's a reason why you don't see me cover a lot of the drama with like Candace Owens leaving the Daily Wire. Like my honest opinion about that, I don't know why she was even hired there in the first place. She never seemed like a good fit with the. I mean, they're 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 total opposite. So it always was like always like why is she on the Daily Wire? Her show didn't do that good. I'm not ragging on her, but there's a reason why she went from a live show to probably her own podcast that was kind of rebranded in a way. I just I just didn't have never made sense to me. So. Why am I going to cover the drama with that? I don't think there really is any drama, but you have these other conservatives and Republicans like hopping on the train of let, let's talk about the latest drama amongst conservatives. Why don't we focus on the immigration, the inflation, like all the crap that Joe Biden's doing? Why are we talking about Candace Owens and the Daily Wire? Like there's really, that's what we're going to spend our time on as conservatives. Like we're idiots. Sometimes we're idiots. We're going to spend time on that drama. The reason why I want to bring this up is because there's, Human trafficking supposedly happening, which screw P. Diddy and him being a celebrity, just the, the, the insane of like the human trafficking that's going on and the Democrats enabling it at the southern border. But hell, this is happening as well. So Sean Diddy Combs, P. Diddy, 
uh, denied the meritless accusations waged against him as he spoke out for the first time following Homeland Security raids on his homes. I think he got raided like three houses the other day. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. Quote, there is no excuse for these excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has his ability to travel been restricted in any way. That's interesting. Quote, this unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs is nothing more than a witch hunt based on a meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Look, I'm a big believer of your innocent until proven guilty. Joe Biden is technically innocent, uh, innocent, folks. I have not seen the actual verifiable proof of his bank accounts and records. The only thing I've actually seen is the checks and what the GOP have come out and said in their committees regarding him funneling money. Look, he's innocent until proven guilty. If you're going to make accusations, you got to prove the man guilty. In the same way here, big old accusations going on with Diddy here. U.S. confirmed to Fox News that the raids on Combs' home on Monday were connected to a federal human trafficking investigation. It's unclear if the rapper is the target of the federal agent's investigation. What I'm going to find fascinating is how much information comes out about this, like who was involved, was there actually human trafficking taking place, and like getting the real details of it. The reason why I want to see that is because I want to compare it to the Epstein case. We still know Jack Bleep about the Epstein case. Who was involved? Who was actually on the island? Who committed this stuff? Are you kidding? Like nothing's come out from it after all these years. So I want to see what comes out of this because there might be some high level people in the same way Epstein had high level people involved and Bleep hit the fan real quick. Earlier today, HSI, that's Homeland Security Investigations, New York, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles. So there's a bunch of people that are being named here. One of them is actor Cuba, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, to his complaint on Monday. So separately, a music producer who sued Combs for sexual assault in February added actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Rodney Jones, known professionally as Little Rod, Little Rod, accused Gooding of sexually harassing and assaulting him in a new version of the suit obtained. I guess there's a lot of stuff that's been filed by people related to Combs, like around his area to uh, women that he's connected with. There's Uber drivers that have been coming out. I guess along this street, there's always parties going on, especially at his house. And just saying there's always women, like scantily dressed women out front. Now, does that mean that there's sex trafficking? No. And really, I mean, there's always scantily dressed women just going to parties just in general. So we'll see what this is. Um, <sighs> just insane, the the just the trafficking aspect of it and uh, there could be a lot of stuff that comes out a lot of people really thrown under the bus on this bad boy so i'll try to keep you guys up to date again i'm not really big in the hollywood scene and and looking at celebrities and taylor swift and ben shapiro and candace owens drama I, i'm just not into it i'm into i'm into looking at stuff like this you know actual stuff that's affecting you guys citizens having non-citizens having to write the vote illegal immigration looking at the debt you know stuff like that i think that's important and uh, other things that I find important here, NBC is releasing statements announcing Rana, or was it Rona, Rana McDaniel is uh, out just days after hiring. There was mega pushback from the Democrat party on this. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but NBC News released a statement on Tuesday afternoon announcing that the former RNC chairwoman is out at the network just days after the company announced that they had hired her to be a contributor. People lost their ish, you guys. NBC News chairman, made the announcement in a memo to employees after multiple on-air hosts at MSNBC lashed out the company during their news shows. It just shows you that these people love to live in a bubble. At least MSNBC, to give them credit, acknowledges the fact that they're left and that CNN still thinks that they're, they're non-biased, right? CNN doesn't have any biases whatsoever. They're the most trustworthy news outlet out there, which is a bunch of bogus baloney. But it just shows you that these people can't handle opposing viewpoints. And then when you listen to them talk, they have no idea what conservatives actually believe. They have no idea what the what the ideology is of the Republican Party, the GOP, the Grand Old Party. The Grand Old Party? I think it's Grand Old Party. Like they have no idea because they sit there and, and they, they bubble in their own milieu, their own environment, and they only hear other lefties talk. 
that's why Republicans and conservatives, we understand the leftist argument, the Democrat Party's argument really well, because we grew up in their environment of watching their media, growing up in their environment of the education system. Like every environment is ran by Democrats and these lefties. And so we understand their argument. They just don't understand us. And they will never understand us because they don't want to work with us. They don't like you guys. That's really what it comes down to. They don't like us, folks. They don't like you at all. It's funny, though, because they want to move into all our areas because uh, Republicans know how to run stuff. There's no doubt that the last several days have been difficult for the news group. Come on. It already start, the first sentence is already freaking so just over the top. Difficult. For, like they're mourning a death, you know, a loss. It's just been so difficult for us. Yeah, we're real, we were really just... We were really just pondering just the news of hiring a Republican and conservative. We didn't know what to do. People were crying and, you know, uh, Janice, you know, she almost left the company. She just couldn't handle it. She's a lifelong Democrat Clinton supporter. And she started crying and, you know, she was going to leave her girlfriend and her trans kid was all upset. It's like, come on, dude. After listening to the legitimate concerns of many of you, I've decided that she will not be an NBC News contributor. No organization, particularly a newsroom, could succeed unless it is cohesive and aligned. Over the last few days, it has become clear that this appointment undermines that goal. It just shows you that these, these people are a bunch of libs that work there. That's all it is. They're a bunch of snowflakes, you guys. I want to personally apologize to our team. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I want to personally apologize to our team members who felt we let them down. While this was a collective recommendation by some members of our leadership team, I approved it and take full responsibility for it. Our initial decision was made because of our deep commitment to presenting our audiences with a widely diverse set of viewpoints and experiences, particularly during these consequential times. Basically says, hey, you know what? We're not going to give you a widely diverse set of viewpoints anymore and experiences. We only want you to have the narrative that we want you to have. We only want the narrative of us rubbing the shoulders of Joe Biden and his nice, grand old feet, just disgusting and stinky feet. And uh, that's all we want you to present. We'll continue to manipulate you is basically what this is saying. We don't want you to see any other opposing viewpoints. We just want you to see ours because, again, it's all about manipulation. It's all about propaganda. And we want to push the Democrat narrative. That's exactly what he's saying without saying it. Well, he said the network was committed to its principles that we must have diverse viewpoints on our programs, which means that they will redouble their efforts to seek voices that represent different parts of the political spectrum. Well, well then if you want to sit there and represent different parts of the political spectrum, why didn't you hide the, hire the person that would probably have an opposing viewpoint and the spectrum of what you're trying to probably hire from? It's wild, dude. Holy crap, man. It, it, it's, when you read through this stuff and you're kind of like siphoning, hey, like what should I present to the audience? You know, like what, what is so outlandish and just hypocritical? It, you just sit here and you scratch your head. It, it's, people are idiots. Like how, it really does, right? Are you guys with me on this? Like how, how do they get this far in life? You know what I mean? It just shows you how great America is. And these people who graduate high school, get degrees from these universities, be elected in the highest levels of office or going to MSNBC, brain ain't working correctly, spewing a bunch of nonsense, doesn't actually challenge their own viewpoints. You know, conservative Republicans, we spend a lot of time actually just reading the other person's viewpoint. We just go out and seek more information. We're constantly reading. We're trying to equip ourselves thoroughly. I'm not the smartest. If I was to debate somebody, I'd probably get my ass kicked. I'm just a simple folk. You know what I mean? I'm just a simple man. I'm not, I'm not intelligent. I'm not an intellectual. I've always said I'm not better than any of you guys. I just do this because I have fun. I get to hang out with all of you lovely patriots. We have a passion for this nation. We want to make America great again. We see an opposing side that doesn't want to make America great again. They keep proving themselves they don't want to make America great again. They keep driving this country into the ground, which I find a threat. And I want to sit there and expose the Democrat Party and their platform for all the hypocrisy that they're constantly doing and sitting there and taking away the rights of Americans and driving again this country into the ground. That's the objective, and it's going to continue to be the objective until they freaking grasp that concept of what they're doing is not making this country a better place, but a worse one. Well, folks, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this shorter show today. Um, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to go super sane, watch this multiple times on mute. You don't have to watch it again. I know you don't want to hear me ramble all the time. But um, I love hanging out with you. Leave us a comment down below. Leave us anything you want. That's a place where you can rant. A lot of you are telling me that YouTube keeps, keeps either banning you or deleting your comments, which pisses me off, by the way. But I'm glad that we could share in the suffering of YouTube effing with us consistently. Consistently. So you, I'm getting screwed with. You're getting screwed with. 
I don't like that. I don't want that to happen. And I'm sorry that your guys' stuff keeps getting deleted. I'm sorry that some of you are getting unsubscribed and, and your likes aren't working. I mean, I hear all of it. We got to keep pressing forward together, folks, as a community. And that just means trying to get more people to watch this show and pushing back on YouTube and giving them the double middle finger and saying, look, you know what? Fine. You want to screw with us? We're just going to send this out to more people and we're going to tell them that YouTube's screwing with this guy and with ourselves. And we're just going to get more views that way. That's the way we could push back against the establishment and against this freaking woke platform that's annoying as hell. I wish there was another one. Rumble wasn't doing me much justice either, to be quite honest. So with that being said, folks, enough of me ranting, raving, complaining. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. And folks, I will see you tomorrow here on The Bull Brad Show.